holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Our Bible reading today is from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the slave children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. And as we ponder on those words, we're now going to hear Mike Hansen, who is going to bring us God's word. The essence of what I want to share with you today relies on two verses from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. First of all, verse 1, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. And then he goes on a little later in chapter 8 to say, Therefore we have an obligation, because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Back in March last year, at the point where we were entering lockdown for the first time, one of our congregation wrote these words in an email to my wife and myself. I feel that all the things that enrich my life are disappearing, and I know it's going to be very hard to adjust to the new way I must now live. And doesn't that sum up the struggle we have all had to face? Covid and its effects have sucked so much of the joy out of living. The joy that grandparents share with their grandchildren. The freedom to socialise, freedom to touch, to embrace. Freedom to go to concerts and to the theatre. Freedom to gather just for a coffee or a pint or for a meal. Freedom to attend live sporting events. Freedom to travel, to enjoy visiting old haunts and new. Freedom even to go shopping. And freedom to meet for worship and to sing hymns of praise. You can probably add your own list of things which you've missed so painfully in these last years and months. Joys lost and wearisome new rules, new behaviour to conform to, guidance for our protection, but enshrined in law. So we long for the Prime Minister to be able to make statements not unlike those made by St Paul, in his own version perhaps of Romans chapter 8. We long for him to be able to say to us, therefore there is now no longer Covid legislation, for those who are COVID free, who are set free thanks to vaccination. We long for that, but we do rather know and suspect that there will be a second therefore. Therefore, friends, we have an obligation to be careful how we live. As we begin to emerge from restrictions to get back to some sort of the, some of the things that we have missed, should we pause to reflect and to learn from the experience? You know, to my wife and I, the, the world of, of grandchildren and the enthusiasm of some of our friends of our age who, having already raised children of their own, just are so enthusiastic for spending their time helping to look after the grandchildren, that, that whole thing has been a bit of a mystery to us the desire to spend all of their retirement being parents again. But it's something that they miss, and we've learned to understand more about the things that other people miss. I have learned from the pain of being deprived of the things that I most value 
to better empathise with the pain of others. I wonder if you have too. On Thursday, Christine and I were able to have a check-up at the dentist and it felt a real privilege. In fact, I could hear as I waited outside the dentist's door for my wife to emerge, she went in first. I could hear her saying over and over again, well, thank you so much. I've really appreciated being able to be here. Who would have thought that being free to go to the dentist would seem to be a really good thing and a privilege? But perhaps it's evidence that God has worked even in these situations, as he promises in the words written in Romans chapter 8, to work for good in all things with those who are called according to his purpose. He can bring good out of all things, even the bad. The roadmap is about releasing us from rules, restrictions and laws, and trusting us to learn to live carefully, but with freedom to exercise our own judgment, to make our own decisions. How do we react to that? Some people are very sceptical about being released from this regime of rules. Some people would prefer it to last until every last possible danger or sign of the disease is gone. To stay locked down, because a regime is there which makes us feel safe and where the authorities carry the responsibility. On the other hand, some of us are eager to be free, free to make our own decisions, free to make mistakes and get it wrong from time to time. And this tension as we emerge from COVID restrictions is parallel to the tension for us as Christians as we celebrate our freedom in Christ. Remember those words again. Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the spirit of life sets us free from the law of sin and death. But therefore also we have an obligation, because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So with freedom and freedom from condemnation comes a responsibility to live our lives to the glory of God. That tension is similar to the one that people feel as they learn to cope with being freed from the Covid restrictions. Today is Trinity Sunday and the doctrine of the Trinity is set to be a difficult one. In fact, traditionally, if you're asked to preach on Trinity Sunday, then people are sympathetic and say, well, it's, you know, it's a really difficult concept and a difficult doctrine. And I want to reject that notion. Actually, I'm not going to attempt to um, go into the intricacies of doctrinal statements about the Trinity. Because perhaps it's we as human beings who have made it complicated. The essence of the Christian faith must be simple. The Christian faith cannot depend on having a degree in theology or knowing our Bibles inside out. Christian faith has to be accessible to all, from the youngest to the oldest, to all abilities and experiences. On Trinity Sunday, we declare our belief in God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And I'm more concerned about the practical than the theory. When I was thinking about this sermon, I was reminded of that song from a few decades ago now, Three Wheels on My Wagon. I wonder if you remember it too. The verse goes, Three wheels on my wagon and I'm still rolling along. The Cherokees are chasing me, arrows fly right on by, but I'm singing a happy song. Coping with freedom as opposed to rules is a question of balance. Having a rounded experience and understanding of the Christian faith is a question of balance, holding Father, Son and Holy Spirit in equal measure. And I once tried to explain to people that a three-legged stool is the very best option rather than four because it balances on uneven territory. Another way of, remind, of uh, thinking about this was the three wheels on the wagon. The song says it's rolling along quite nicely. It gets less good if it's down to two and then down to one. We had a neighbour who had a dog that had been in a car accident and had had to have one leg removed. And the dog was able to get along almost as happily on three legs as it did on four. 
It then had another accident a few years later, and uh, rather than have the, put, the dog put down, it was able to survive having a second leg removed. And you'd have thought that would make life very difficult, not least in the light of the fact that the actual missing legs were both down one side. But nonetheless, it, it adapted and was able to get around quite effectively. But I'm reminded of that as I recognise that actually to live a full Christian life, we need to pay due attention and trust in both in God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And it has been the case over the years that sometimes groups of Christians put an excess emphasis on one aspect of the Christian faith to the expense of others. And that's when it all goes a little bit wrong. It doesn't collapse, but not quite the way it should be. That's enough of that. Balance is key, as I say. We put our trust in God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It's living it out that matters. The first Christians didn't have creeds to recite. They just got on with seeking to serve their Creator as followers of the Lord Jesus, living their lives in the power of the Holy Spirit. As we get our freedoms back, let us value the joys of life all the more. Let us value our regained freedoms all the more. Let us value each other all the more just as we value our freedom from condemnation as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, as those for whom the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. When the Prime Minister has a lectern in front of him in Downing Street, it says, hands, face, space and fresh air. If I had a lectern in front of me, I would have Father, Son and Holy Spirit and fullness of life.